what was going to happen at first. Uh, it was an evolving process. You were floating out over the canyon. It was a gold mine. The Grand Canyon, with its breathtaking vistas and nature's artistic hand, captivates visitors worldwide. Yet, recent discoveries beneath its surface have left scientists and the world astonished. Join us on a journey to unveil the extraordinary details that expose the secrets hidden within the beauty of the Grand Canyon. Without further delay, let's dig in. The Curse of the Grand Canyon. A peculiar phenomenon has caught the attention of Grand Canyon Park Rangers visitors returning stolen items believed to be cursed. Rangers report instances where people, after taking items from the canyon as souvenirs, experience a string of bad luck. In response, these individuals mail back the allegedly jinxed objects, attributing their misfortune to the pilfered items. Despite the subjective nature of the belief in cursed items, it's crucial to emphasize that removing any natural objects from the Grand Canyon National Park is a violation of the law. The strange cycle of taking and returning objects adds a mysterious layer to the allure of this iconic natural wonder. An underground ancient city. Underground city in Grand Canyon. Well, in 1909, a lost Egyptian civilization within the Grand Canyon unfolded when explorer G.E. Kincaid made a startling discovery during an expedition led by Smithsonian anthropologist S.A. Jordan. Despite the challenging entrance, Kincaid entered the caverns and found a vast subterranean system, spacious enough to accommodate 50,000 people, radiating from a central cavern like spokes on a wheel. The caves housed an array of artifacts, including statues, copper weapons, and granaries stocked with seeds. Astonishingly, the objects displayed distinctive Egyptian designs, sparking questions about the potential existence of an entire Egyptian civilization in the Grand Canyon. Despite multiple attempts to locate the caverns, their elusive nature fueled skepticism about the story's authenticity. The mystery gained widespread attention, giving rise to various theories. Some suggested it was a newspaper hoax by the Gazette to boost sales, while others proposed a Smithsonian cover-up, speculating that the government aimed to keep the location confidential, much like other covert areas. The Rocky Serpents Now let's talk about the Grand Canyon Rattlesnake, a subspecies of the widespread western rattlesnake specifically known as Crotalus oreganus. Adeptly blends into the diverse rock layers of the Grand Canyon. This venomous pit viper employs its rattles, capable of vibrating up to 50 times per second, one of the fastest muscle contractions documented in science, to caution potential predators. The Grand Canyon's vicinity hosts nine rattlesnake species, including two subspecies of the western rattlesnake. Within the expanse of Grand Canyon National Park, Five species of the Grand Canyon and Great Basin subspecies of the Western Rattlesnake thrive, such as the Speckled Rattlesnake, Black-tailed Rattlesnake, and Prairie Rattlesnake. Additionally, four species, including the Grand Canyon subspecies of the Western Rattlesnake, have been documented below the canyon rim. So while exploring the area, be mindful of them. After all, you won't want to lose your life. The Shape-Shifting Power of the Grand Canyon the Grand Canyon shape has been formulating with influence of the Colorado River over centuries. Although changes may appear gradual to the naked eye, the river, along with the forces of wind, rain, and other environmental elements, continues to sculpt and redefine the Grand Canyon. This ongoing process ensures that future generations witness a dynamic and ever-evolving masterpiece of nature. Geologists estimate a gradual erosion of one foot every 200 years, given the stability of the Colorado Plateau, the geological area housing the Grand Canyon. As long as the Colorado River flows, geologists expect the Grand Canyon to deepen. The vast expanse of the Grand Canyon contributes to its ecological diversity, offering visitors the unique experience of witnessing entirely different ecosystems coexisting within its confines. The Confinement of the Red Rocks While the Grand Canyon is home to larger and traditionally more dangerous animals like mountain lions and black bears, an unexpected culprit has earned the title of the most dangerous, the rock squirrel, as revealed by emergency room visits. Park rangers at the Grand Canyon describe these seemingly harmless creatures as unforgiving and absolutely ferocious, urging visitors to be cautious about their behavior. Characterized by their spotted gray fur and measuring 17 to 21 inches, rock squirrels are large ground squirrels with distinctive long, bushy tails adorned with white edges, thriving in rocky habitats. 
They can be spotted on canyon walls, cliffs, slopes, and rock piles, and are known for burrowing beneath rocks to create dens. Active during the daytime when human traffic is high, they live in colonies and exhibit teamwork. There have been instances where rock squirrels lure and attack unsuspecting tourists. To mitigate the risk of such encounters, tourists are strongly advised to avoid close contact with any type of squirrel during their visit to the Grand Canyon. The Terrifying Creation of the Grand Canyon Teddy Roosevelt once deemed the Grand Canyon a must-see for every American. However, the extensive history of the 277-mile-long canyon extends far beyond its official destination. The Grand Canyon's origin unfolds with the creation of various rock layers spanning approximately 2 billion years. It all started with the formation of igneous and metamorphic rocks, followed by the gradual deposition of sedimentary layers. At the top, these foundational rocks were shaped by the gradual erosion caused by the Colorado River. The Colorado River has been engaged in rock carving for 5 to 6 million years, a geological process termed downcutting. This phenomenon involves the river sculpting canyons or valleys. Over time, the river carved through the land, giving rise to the awe-inspiring depths of the canyon as we recognize it today. The Havasupai Tribe The Havasupai, known as the People of the Blue-Green Water, primarily reside in Supai, a canyon connected to the Grand Canyon. Historically, their range extended from Bill Williams Mountain in the south to the Little Colorado River in the east. They practice vertical migration within the Grand Canyon, adapting to different layers based on seasonal changes in autumn and winter, engaged in hunting and gathering on the Colorado Plateau. The Havasupai would cultivate the Tonto platform, including the Indian Garden, during spring and summer. Their crops include corn, beans, squash, melons, and pumpkins. European explorers made contact with the Havasupai when Spanish priest Francisco Garcias journeyed to the Havu Canyon in 1776. Garcias's account revealed the existence of another Havasupai village extending as far east as Moenkopi Wash, surpassing the Grand Canyon. Confined to a 518-acre reservation in Havasu Canyon for many years, the Havasupai tribe saw the restoration of 185,000 acres of canyon and rim territory between the establishment of the modest Havasupai reservation in 1882 and its expansion in 1975. Over time, the Havasupe adapted their lifestyle, increasingly relying on farming, wage labor, and tourism for sustenance. Grand Canyon Caves Tourists engrossed in capturing selfies on the Grand Canyon's edge remain unaware that the reddish limestone cliffs conceal numerous caves. These inaccessible crevices have served as ideal habitats for wood rats, bats, birds, and long extinct mountain goats and sloths for millennia. Ranging in size, some caves are so constricted that crawling is necessary for entry, while others offer spacious interiors, allowing one to turn without touching the walls. The extremely arid conditions create a perfect setting for preservation, enabling researchers to glimpse more than 40,000 years into the past and understand a world that thrived during an era when a substantial portion of North America was veiled under a dense ice sheet. In a recent Grand Canyon expedition, researchers explored Rampart Cave at the far western end. There, they discovered hundreds of dung balls on the floor, seemingly fresh at first glance. However, these droppings belong to the extinct 500-pound Shasta ground sloth, dating back over 10,000 years to the 1930s. Uranium Deposits Significant deposits of uranium ore are present in the public lands surrounding Grand Canyon National Park primarily within sandstone, siltstone, and mudstone layers. These deposits are situated in geological features known as breccia pipes. Uranium mining in this region traces back to the 1950s with an orphan mine just two miles from Grand Canyon Village. In the mid-2000s, rising uranium prices led to increased mining activities, resulting in numerous mining claims around the park by the end of the decade. Around eight uranium mines, including the presently operational Canyon Mine, recently renamed Pen and Plain Mine, pose threats to springs in the Grand Canyon vicinity. The financial unpredictability of uranium mining often leads to abandonment, leaving sites exposed to the elements and posing risks of groundwater contamination, airborne uranium pollution, and dust dispersion. This poses safety hazards for recreational visitors while also raising concerns among the 11 Native American tribes, such as the Havasupai. 
who consider the Grand Canyon spiritually and culturally significant. These tribes oppose uranium mining to protect their water sources and preserve cultural practices. The Grand Canyon Skywalk Walking on the clouds becomes a reality at the Grand Canyon Skywalk, a remarkable 400-ton glass cantilever bridge extending 70 feet beyond the Grand Canyon West Rim, easily accessible from Las Vegas through a two-and-a-half-hour road trip or a quick 45-minute flight, it offers breathtaking views of lake. Engineered to withstand extreme conditions, the structure can support the weight of 71 fully loaded 747 passenger planes and endure a magnitude 8 earthquake. Construction began on October 6, 2004, following a Wapi blessing, spanning 18 months of drilling and an additional four months of welding. Specifically designed manipulators lifted the 80,000 pound glass floor panels, each capable of holding up to 800 people into place. That's all for today. Make sure to like, subscribe, and press the bell icon for all future updates. Do share your thoughts on this video in the comments below. See you next time.